the running gear of a Tiger I tank and the design concept of a Panther tank. It is fun to imagine what the Germans could have accomplished by sharing parts and simplifying production between the Tiger and Panther tanks. This tank never did exist. And it does have some interesting design quirks. Uh, note the red headlight. Uh, that is only there because I needed to cannibalize parts from this vehicle to give one of my other tanks the proper headlight. The vision port for the driver up here um, is slightly blocked by the frontal plate. Another fine example of this tank's quirks is although the turret mantlet is rounded, it does still have a little bit of a chin. Uh, that's because the BB launching system in this uh, would not fit inside of that curved mantlet and therefore a little wedge had to be cut for it. Uh, I have never seen these on any panther tanks, but they do come with the headlong panther, and if anyone in the comment sections could tell me what they're supposed to represent, or if they in fact do represent anything, that would be great. It looks to me like you could hang bags or something off of the side. The running gear of this tank is the exact same as the Tiger one, so you can see eight interleafed road wheels per side. In fact, it's so similar. Here's the Panther tank, and here's the Tiger tank. Almost identical. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. But if you've been here for a while, you'll know that Henlong has a different Panther tank, a proper Panther tank. This Henlong isn't manufactured either nearly as much anymore or at all. Uh, the only way I was able to get my hands on this was to buy a static model off of eBay and put the electronic parts inside. There were some quirks with that of course. Uh, as this was a used model, uh, there were some slight differences and would be differences if you were to buy your own static model. Uh, for example, the center caps for the uh, sprocket wheels were missing. Um, this tank originally did not come with a smoke uh, generator in the back, uh, so this tank doesn't smoke. The elevation and depression of the gun in this tank uh, currently does not work as the motor that controls that has long since been dead uh, and I haven't gotten around to replacing it. However, this tank did come with metal gears, which is why it makes a kind of a weird sound when it goes around. They could certainly be oiled. From the side, when the, especially when the turret's at the side, the profile of this tank and the overall proportion seems fine. Got a whole lot of space on the, well, if you're facing the tank, the left side of the tank. When it comes to separately fitted parts to this tank, there were not that many. For this was a static model, uh, so some parts were already applied, such as the machine gun and the little handrails up top these guys uh, but other than that um, I think you only have to fit these tracks right here one thing that I do regret doing is putting these stickers on uh, they do not stick on very well and in fact they're peeling in the back here at the rear of the tank I do appreciate how much effort they put into trying to make it look like a panther as you can see on the left and right sides just above the tracks you have your stowage boxes uh, it is a vertical plate instead of the angled plate like the real panther here's a closer look at that exhaust in the rear this was the older style of exhaust for the panther tank and as you can see uh, it's split a little right there and there uh, these two exhaust tubes are actually the only two that produce smoke uh, these other ones are blanks and do not connect to the smoke generator if this tank had one one of the ways that you can see that this was a static model beforehand is that you can still see the old switches. Uh, you have your ABC switch that you used to be able to switch frequencies on your radio. Uh, here's an older radio, for example, and it would come down here and you can choose A, B, or C. Uh, unfortunately, I only have one of these left, uh, which is my Panzer III. The rest of the tanks have been upgraded. Um, you can also see your volume switch, which is now controlled uh, on your remote down here for the V for volume, uh, as well as your smoke unit, which this tank did not have, and therefore there is no on and off switch for the smoke unit. Uh, one thing that I really do appreciate about these tanks, specifically the Tiger one and the Pan Tiger, is that the battery hatch release requires, well, 
first of all, two hands. Uh, but most importantly, no screwdriver, which makes it a lot easier for me to change in the field. Uh, while we're down here, there is one thing that I like to advertise, and that is that the tracks uh, are sagging. I am not a big fan of the Tiger One or these tracks. Um, they're so close to the edge of the road wheel when they are on properly, uh, it's just easy for them to fall off. There's a huge gap between the turret and the hull roof, which isn't found on uh, like any other tank in the Hemong range. So, in my opinion, I think this tank is a great tank as a toy for a smaller child. Uh, I mean, not too small, there's still small parts, but uh, there's only like five or six things that you can put on this panther tank. And, uh, and although this tank does look pretty quirky with its uh, proportions, uh, it does have a nice camo, which I do appreciate. Uh, mainly green, but there's great splashes of brown. Uh, and black. Uh, a lot of the other headlong models are a little bit basic. For example, the next row down, it's nothing but gray, nothing but tan, and nothing but gray again. Uh, you got a little bit more variation with your tiger down there, but uh, for the most part, headlong camos are mm, pretty boring. Uh, they might still continue to produce these. You might be able to find them on like Allied Express but at that point, you probably have to ship them over here for like $130, which in my case, I don't think is worth it. And actually, uh, when I was younger, I ordered one of these from, I think, Allied Express or something like that from China a long time ago. I think it was $45 for the tank and $100 for shipping. Uh, and I guess the cargo ship got lost at sea because uh, I never received that tank. Although now that I'm thinking about it, you know, this could be the one. Who knows? It ended up in the U.S. somehow. Uh, so yeah, as I said before, this was a static model and I was the one who put the electronics in it. Uh, but of all the electronics that were still inside of the tank, uh, such as the uh, gears, the motors, the turret traverse, uh, only one failed. Uh, so that's pretty good for being on a shelf for who knows how many years. Uh, but I'll go ahead and take this out and we'll see how it runs.
there it is, the Henlong Pan Tiger. I only ended up losing my tracks twice, but still, that's two more times than I would have wanted. All in all, a pretty solid tank.